You're now listening to The Shipper's Toolbox, presented by Refund Retriever. All right, thanks for coming back for part two. Here we go again with Quentin of Shipper HQ. Who's your, like, I guess your uh, ideal customer? Like, what what size, what, what is it? Is it a month for your, I guess your pricing? Is it monthly? Is it yearly? How do you... By usage, what so, is the uh, what's the deal? Cool. So we are so we're a SaaS service, so monthly. Uh, you can also pay annually as well, depending if you want to save a few bucks. We we give discounts mm-hmm. on annual. Um, as far as as far as like an ideal customer and like a customer profile, it's really kind of hard because we, we have a lot of features that make it vertical specific. Like we're on B two B, we offer LTL shipping and accessorials. Uh, we use a lot of date and time functionality that plays really well for perishables and gifting and also for customers that just want to show transparency in the cart and checkout when they want those to arrive um, all the way to things like you know rating off multiple warehouses and the biggest one is dimensional shipping mm-hmm. like taking into account the actual you know dimensions and weight that we're sending off to the packages yeah. because with the dimensional divisor being squeezed down on you report them both and the carry passes that back that's probably our most used like report and issue in our client interface is dimensional weight people just oh, I bet yeah, it's it's one of those things in the carries every year. It just kind of it just kind of. I mean, I don't I don't and, know why I'm trying like, to tell you this. You know this. It's like, like, but also people don't get the concept. Even if how they do you really explain it to them? How like because that's one of the things that like it's such a tricky thing to explain, but it's so important. Like it's such a it's it's it seems like trivial. So sometimes yeah. I'll, I'll talk to a customer and we he's out of the box here, just off the way to the package, and they'll go, "Well, that's fine." Yeah. And then, well, what do you sell? And they go, "Like I sell painting canvases." And I was like, "Okay, well, how much is it weigh?" Well, it's four pounds. I was like, well, what are the dimensions of this canvas? It yeah. sounds like a nice painting. 16 by 20. Then you go, okay, so 16 by 20 and it weighs four pounds. Like, you're going to get kind of tricky. And yeah. the guy was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And so I, like, pulled up. I was like, go to the UPS website. Let's just talk through this. Send just the way into that. That was the only way I could get it through that guy when we saw the difference in the rates. Yeah. It's in, like, now we've seen a huge, like, increase in that the four and a half percent audit fee whenever they don't put in the right dimensions mm-hmm. or they're redimensionalized and it's slowly going up and we sell like a few like a dollar here a dollar there because it's like a dollar per package up mm-hmm. until a certain point and then another like a client that they probably only ship like six hundred dollars a month or mm-hmm. a week in UPS and he was seeing like a thirteen dollar charge seventeen twenty seven thirteen and he was just like, we're like, this is, this Where's is going to get crazy. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's going to, it's going to keep going. So, but as far as the, for what your customer, I mean, it doesn't matter like well, how much is, what's your, the lowest so, monthly. So the way that we've set up the prices, is it's not, it's not a la carte, but we have four different tiers and each tier offers like the value of that. So we have an essentials tier. It starts at $50 a month. Um, we have a standard plan starts at hundred dollars a month. Our pro plan starts at 300 and then we also have an enterprise tier on Magento. We have different pricing cause there's more features there. Mm-hmm. It's a hundred, two fifty, four hundred 400 than enterprise. But our idea around that was, is that, you know, a customer might not need ever all the features, but they might just need one. That's the essentials plan. Yeah. So we give you a couple carriers to set up, give you a couple carrier rules and choose your feature. The standard plan, you know, it kind of opens this door. Our most popular is our pro plan. And that's the one that you know kind of gives the customer the ability to maybe show the estimated delivery date in the cart and check out, take into account their dimensional shipping. You know, we have the ability to dynamically determine the address type, whether it's residential or commercial, make sure you're charging the right amount of money there. And then you can add on something fun like you know, method naming where you can rename the shipping methods to say, you know, Tom's kooky free shipping yeah. or whatever you want to call that in the cart and checkout. And on the back end it actually passes in like that. Yeah, I, see, I mean I still see so many of our clients that just they offer like a flat rate shipping and they're like UPS ground and it's five ninety nine, not because and they don't do it as like a competitive advantage to kind of um, differentiate differentiate themselves from a competitor they do it because they don't know how to truly price it out and how to truly tell somebody when their package is going to be there so like what you guys are offering is a way to kind of like truly under have your end user understand how much it is to ship that package and when it's going to get there not that it's just like a flat fee mm-hmm. and it's a transparency tool i guess is one yes. way to say that because and it shows because like to your point you know you can do a flat rate but if you're going to pass on the actual cost of what it's going to cost to ship the customer end customers are going to be happy because yeah. like, look i know this is 1185 i know it's going to get here from you know i don't know brooklyn down to us in texas it, giving them that transparency and then you know as our customer is going like, cool, I know I charge them the right amount, 
you know, if I want to add 10% on top of that to cover mm -hmm. my box, my tape, my packing, I can add that. Yeah. You know, I don't have to just do the cost. Or some people, if you get to that point where you go, look, I know what these cost, I have my understand my base, now I want to take it as a competitive advantage and knock mm -hmm. down my shipping, but I want to have a little bit more of an expensive product in the store, but I want to have a cheaper shipping, so, I, so when we search off that, I have the cheapest. Are they able to like increase the price of shipping based off of what they pay or like bring it up to like what the published rate mm -hmm. is? Or is it kind of whatever they want? Absolutely, or? so you can show, so we have, we have the ability to toggle between like the published rates and the negotiated rates. Mm -hmm. Some customers want to pass on their negotiated rates to be super competitive and say, look, I want my customers to pay exactly what I pay, not a penny more. Or some customers will add on a percentage on top of that and say that's my margin. Yeah. Or you just do the show list rate and go, hey, that's what everyone else is paying. What do I care? I think I think the majority of people that I have come across they do flat rate or free shipping because it's the easiest thing for them to do, and they they truly don't understand kind of how to make shipping a competitive advantage for their company. It's a it's a big learning exercise yeah. because it's I think that. Um, like if you think of like purchasing online, you know, the routes are bigger, we can go a lot further now, but with Amazon, it's just free. Yeah. And so people are conditioned to think that. And when you think you take a step back and you go, well, no, you could actually just charge what you pay for it to mm -hmm. the customer and then you don't have to worry about, you know, getting these fees. It's something that's a new, I wouldn't say concept or it's like this like novel idea. I just think that people, there's just a lot of re-education. So when we talk to customers on the phone, there's really a, we talk more about like what you can and can't do. And then they're like. I know this is possible. Yeah, like anything is possible. So, how long does it that? take to implement your offering onto, say, say I'm a uh, a company that shipping out a couple hundred packages a week. I do free shipping. How long does it take to incorporate Shipper HQ into my? I, would it be dependent on the platform I'm on? A, or? a little bit. So, for example, so a big commerce for big commerce elite partners are built into the core of the platform. You just click install. It turns on. Um, Magento is a bit trickier because there is an installation process. It's super simple. Um, on Magento 1, it was a lot of drag and drop like everything else. Magento 2 has moved to uh, Composer, which is you just add Composer, install, you add these things, Composer update, um, and it gives you the ability to just put, pop it in there that way. Um, I think one of the things that kind of takes the longest is kind of the setup of Shipper HQ. The actual installation is pretty forward. So if you're a big commerce customer, you click install, we're on there. Yeah. You get there and you go, okay, cool, what do I need to do? You need to enter in your origin address because we want to make sure we're calculating the rates from where you're coming from. If you have more than one origin, totally cool, add them in there. You can do a CSV import and export as well. Depending Based on the product of where it's coming from. Exactly. Okay. So the one, the one really important thing that we do is, is instead of a customer having to worry about two different like product catalogs, we use the e-commerce platform. So we had a couple attributes on the like big commerce. So like we have a warehouse attribute. So it says like, hey, this product can come from here or there. Yeah. Or this one always comes from here. So that's our way to kind of like to make sure the customer doesn't have to do extra data because if we had to require them to do two product catalogs then people would hate us yeah maybe more than they already do I, <laughs> I, hope, I hope they don't hate us but so they would set that up you know they have to get the carriers to get the carriers credentials you know for like UPS for example they have to get like their latest invoice mm -hmm. FedEx you have to register for credentials those are two things that the carriers themselves have kind of made a bit of a cumbersome process yeah so tell me about it yeah, yeah I know I, I, that's why I can talk to you because like you understand this so I mean that honestly sometimes one of the things that takes the longest is that we said hey I need a more recent invoice that doesn't have a control ID on it but you know a customer can get things set up in a day yeah like, most people you ask somebody with a control ID on their UPS invoice and they're like huh yeah, they like what are you what are you talking? And you're about? like, so there's a column of five in the top right. It's the bottom one. It's right below the flux capacity. <laughs> and they're like, okay, whatever. Yeah, we can, can I just email it to you and you register. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, sure. That's what we do too. That's <laughs> the point because like the thing is, is that you know with with like logistics being a slow thing as a tech provider, we're so we're running laps around them. And so yeah. if you get in situations like this where we'll get on calls and we'll go like, hey, you know, if we can make this a bit simpler, you know, there's a few friction points here, and they'll go, okay, cool, we'll raise them. Iris friction points like two years ago with the carrier. Yeah, and like one Nothing of the happened. yeah one of the things like we've noticed just their lack of technology like one of the kind of like the new things that we're doing with refund retrievers is like reports and analytics mm -hmm. and we're we're doing that for customers that are that are clients of our competitors but they don't have reports mm -hmm. and we're finding a huge hole in the market because you can't go to FedEx or UPS and say hey I need a list of all my accessorial fees in the last three months. Like, what did I pay? You can't do that with them. You can't just get out a printout of where everything is. Or or, or like taking all of my, um, say, additional handling charges for mm -hmm. FedEx. Okay, well let me see what the corrected and the adjusted are 
for the last three months for all the packages on one sheet. Mm. And so we're, we're finding that their lack of technology is kind of spurring on a, a new market for us. Too. Which they're just making work for you, but yeah. just not doing anything. And it's like, they're, and I, I think also because they can't even kind of keep up. They're too busy, I think, looking at each other right now and then looking at Amazon that they're not looking at the customer. Mm-hmm. They're not looking at what the customer really needs. I, I think that, I think that with, you know, thinking of like the LTL market, for example, it's a very old school market yes. where, yeah. you know, I'll talk to a customer, how do you get a shipping rate? Well, I call Marge and Marge looks at the table that's on the next to her computer and she tells me how much it's going to cost. I think that for them, they're just, they're just behind. Yeah. And I think that for them, they, they just think this is, this pallet is going to go to Wisconsin and then this thing is going to go to Cincinnati. Like that's all they think about to think about like the online bit of how that works is insane. We have a partner of ours, Retrans Freight. I don't know if you've heard of this guy mm-hmm. or no. Yeah. We're owned by like Kuhn and Nagel. I don't understand like how they are leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else. Like they are phenomenal. They're fantastic. And they're so e-commerce focused. To me, it's crazy to compare them to the other three PLs out there that are just, you know, like they're just over in a field kicking dirt. And yeah. the thing is like, I love working with them because they understand it and they have like that they're a technology provider that does it similar to us like we're technology providers in shipping yeah and that's the thing that gives it like that's why we are where we are because we can move fast and quick and to see an ltl provider of that you know magnitude doing that as well it's awesome yeah Uh, you go into most ltl providers or most uh you know like freight anybody in the freight industry go in their office and there's like you you swear there's still a rolodex somewhere in that office like somewhere there's gonna they're gonna be like oh i know let me let me look for this guy. Oh, absolutely! And it's just it's, they have those it's, books where they're just yeah. flipping through it of everyone's cards. Even even a lot of the like technology that I see for freight companies that put things out, it's still it's very like two thousand and four, just like shopping for things. You're like, what's going on? Here? My 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 take on that, my hot take on that is that with B two B companies and like traditional people who are using LTL. A lot of those people have kids that are coming into the business and they're coming in saying, hey, I'm running the company now. How are we doing this? And you look at it and you go, that sucks. Yeah. Why are you doing it like that? Let's, can we go a different way? And LTL provider goes, that's just how it is. And I think that the more people are demanding and coming into B2B, you know, these people expect a B2C experience. And I think that's what's going to eventually push the LTL providers because they, they want LTL freight on the cart. Yeah. Now. We have a tons of customers that do that. And the more, like, I think that the market is going to end up pushing them instead of them pushing the market, which is kind of frustrating because we have, you know, 30-something LTL carriers, and I can count on one hand the ones that get it. Yeah. And I think that as this market moves and as this, you know, as B2B, you know, really wants to be more like B2C, they want to see the rates, they want to be able to check out. As that changes, you know, some of the LTL providers are going to be left in the dust and never make it. The couple that already get it and are already on the train are just going to keep... Yeah, they just need to be gobbled up and taken up by the people that know what they're doing. Exactly. That's a, that's the thing that I see. I see from kind of my my different view of the same landscape that you see is that, you know, these these carriers need to keep up. Yes. Yeah. Us technology providers, we're rolling. I mean look at Amazon. Amazon's yeah. Amazon's trying to do that same thing. And you know, as we were kind of talking about the other way, I see why. You know, what if they want to deliver past these days? I want to deliver Monday through Sunday. You know, they have the infrastructure and mm-hmm. if they can financially afford to do it, which Amazon could you know, financially afford to do anything. Yeah. You know, why not? Cool. All right. Well, how long have you been with Shipper HQ? Four years next month. Four years so next month. So four years next month. Awesome. And what did you, uh, did you, who did you, how did you get into, I guess, the logistics space? So. <laughs> were, were you an eBay shipper that came No. Out? So, <laughs> so I, so I have, I have always been a massive eBay fan. One of the things I like to do the most in the entire world is, this is kind of incriminating. I like to, when I go out and drinking on a weekend, I like to go on eBay when I've had a few too many drinks, and I like to buy things. And I like to wake up on like Tuesday and just see what shows up on my doorstep. That's a very, very invigorating thing. Especially when I look at my bank account and I say there's $300 missing. Where is this coming from? Why do I have a PayPal thing for $300? But no, that's my tight eBay. But so before this, I was actually in college. This was my first job out of college. Okay. Um, while I was in college- Where'd you from, go? I went to UT Tyler over UT, in East okay. Texas. Um, while I was there, I was pre-med, and then my father and my mother, both hospital people, worked there for years. My dad's been an ER director, a hospital director, so that's kind of like what I knew. 
Um, did that, I went and started doing like rounds, you know, working, and I got thrown up on twice in the same day. Like, I'm not even kidding, I got thrown up on when I first got there, and I was like, this is crazy. So I had to go, and I was like, hey dad, I need to get a set of scrubs. And he was like, we don't just have scrubs. I'm like, look dad, I know you have scrubs somewhere in your office, man, please have a pair of scrubs. I got thrown up on it. He was like, get out of my office, the scrubs are over there. So, changed, two or three hours later, right after lunch, walk into another room, I get peeked on again. And then I walk to my dad, and I'm totally abusing power at this point, because I wasn't, wasn't with my dad, it was through something else. Dad, I need a pair of scrubs. He goes, what are you talking about? I was like, I got thrown up on He goes, Quentin, I gave you a pair of scrubs. Like, I'm so busy right now, why are you coming in here? I was like, Dad, I got thrown up on again. And he was like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, we need to have a conversation when we get home. I was like, all right, cool. So my dad comes over to my house, my dad still lived in East Texas, came over to my house and was like, there's a weird sign going on here that you got thrown up on twice in the same day. And I was like, okay, whatever. So shortly after that, I switched to engineering. So I got a degree in industrial engineering. So, but while I was doing all that, uh, from 17 to about oh, 23, I was running operations for a guy who owned 12 pizza restaurants. So he had like eight, you know, kind of like, they're, they're called Mazios. They're like pizza. Mazios. They had, there's, yeah. some, there's something like Orange and like Nederland. There's some in the Houston area. No, I've never, have you heard of Mazios? No. I've never heard of them. That's, that's why they're not around so much anymore. Anyways, <laughs> they, were really, they were killing it in like the 90s and 2000s. But you just ordered online, they had buffets, and we had a couple of buffet restaurants. And we had a couple of nicer restaurants, and I worked in one of the nicer restaurants and ran operations. So I did a lot of like like SWOT analysis, a lot of like, I did like the P&Ls, and this is what I did because I, that was my background. So running ops for these things, yeah. so I had a, had a few hundred employees, uh, and that was my background. When I graduated college, uh, we talked about opening up a bar. He was like, hey, we'll make you a partial owner of a bar. I was like, cool, this sounds great. But then I thought about it, and I was like, well, I got this engineering degree, I should probably do something with it. So I was, in my head, was like, I'm gonna either go to Austin or San Antonio. And then I put it in my application, as you do as a fresh grad right out of college, as a millennial, you apply everywhere. Yeah. I just hope someone wants you. Um, the someone who wanted me was uh, Shipper HQ. Uh, so I applied as like a technical support engineer. Uh, one of the backgrounds, one of the things you need to be able to do was the code. I took three coding classes in college and I slept through one of them. So I had a, I had a very baseline understanding of what it was and I was very forthcoming with that information. Cause I was like, look, you guys want someone really technical. Yeah. I am, I have like, I have a toe in technical, but I can do everything else. I have the intent, that was myself, I have the intangibles. Yeah. So that's how I got into it. So I got into it about four years ago and I've just been like reading logistics ever since yeah. because it's, it's an interesting See, thing. like I don't, I, I don't know any code at all, but I can read. So like I can be behind my programmers and they're looking at stuff and I can see issues. Mm -hmm. Like I oh there's your there's your problem right there. But if you ask me to write any of it, it's kinda like I, I always equate it as a matrix. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see the zeros and ones coming down, but I can't write any of it. <laughs> oh yeah, I, th I think there's. A, I can I can see what's if going. You have on. the you have like the logical mind because I I came in because I took like. C sharp in college, and then I had to take like some intro thing. It was like CSS and JavaScript and things like that. And what it gave me was kind of like a very, very low baseline, like yeah. low, low baseline. And then I just kind of a logical mind from an engineering degree. So like you'd see something and you'd be like, you don't have a semicolon there. And everything else <laughs> does. I don't know what a semicolon yeah, does. Exactly. But there's yeah. not one right there, <laughs> and something's gonna happen. And that was yeah. That was my extent. Yeah. I got into it, and then I I transitioned full time as a developer for a few months, and then. I talked too much, and then I was transitioned out. So that's when I started taking over our operations more. That's funny. Because I just talked too much in our development room. Yeah. That's why I'm, there's a room, the room right across from us, I'm not really allowed in there. That's a do not disturb sign that's for that's me. Really, that's for I you. had someone write it for me, so I knew not to go in there. Nice. All right, so say one of my customers comes to me and wants to start with Shipper HQ. Where do I send them? Like, do they, Are they able to see a demo of what you do? Do you have examples mm -hmm. of... What's going on? Where would where would they go if they wanted to start? So the best place to go would be just be shipperhq.com. Uh, we do a free 30-day trial that allows you to plug it on your site, kind of take a look around, take a look at the dashboard. Um, our team is always accessible. So we're based in Austin, Texas. We have the, the existing team from the UK are still there. So 3.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. CST, call one of us. You're going to get a hold of someone. They might have a funny British accent or they're just going to be a Texan. So it's one of the <laughs> two. Um, but yeah, give us a call. You know, Happy to talk about what you're doing, what you're shipping, where you're going. Uh, we have a lot of cool case studies as well that you can see. And then there's some like video dashboards and walkthroughs. Nice. Where's the next trade show you guys are going to? Uh, so not me personally, but we're actually going to be at Meet Magento Singapore next week. Okay. Um, our 
CTO is sitting on a panel with PayPal about mobile optimization, and then our CEO, Karen, is doing a talk about where she sees Magento going. Isn't there a Magento one in September here Yes, in so Majex. So Majex is... Yeah, what well, is that exactly? So Majex uh, is being thrown by Wagento. Um, it was previously Mage Titans. Mage Titans was a developer-focused conference that was actually started by Space48 uh, up in Manchester, uh, the guy, a gentleman named John Woodall. Um, but it was all developer, all talking about that. So we were actually were the first people to bring it to Austin maybe three years ago. And then we worked with Wagento on it. So Wagento's kind of had the baton the last two years. What they're making it this year is a developer and a merchant and a business person specific conference. It's two days, September 12th and 13th. Uh, so it's in Austin, so it's a great issue to come to Are Austin. you guys going to be there? Yeah, we're going to be yeah. there. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be there. Um, I'm going to be palling around, walking the floor, and doing some things yeah. like that. Um, I, we blew our conference budget on sponsoring MLEU um, in Oct end of October. Which was that? Magento Live uh, Europe. Oh, yeah. It's in Amsterdam. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's where we put our money in to sponsor just because we've already done that. And we're really trying to, like, the people, we went to meet Magento Singapore last year and just had a fantastic time there. The ecosystem is there is, you know, developing and Asia is a market that we have our eye on. Mm. And so we did, we're doing that and then we're doing Europe. So here in Austin, we're just going to be the, you know, the locals. Is, uh, what, who, Wagento, you said? Yeah, Wagento. Are they the ones that have the little Boba Fett Yeah, they have the, the little tiki guy. They're, yeah. Yeah. It looked like Boba Fett to me, but Refund has eaten two of those things. Has he really? Yeah, I took him. I took him back. One from IRC last year. He ate that one, and then because my son likes them. Uh huh. And the other day, I saw him walking around with one in his mouth. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Brent or uh, Madeline might send you a couple. I'll, I'll, I'll let him know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna be a fun event. Are you guys gonna come down for it? Uh, it's I'm not not, down over. I have to say down everyone. Yeah. You guys are just over. Yeah. So we just. Good. I just noticed it like yesterday mm -hmm. I think so we haven't even looked into it but we're definitely gonna, gonna when we get back see that should be a cool yeah. event I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for it I think anytime that you know Austin has a really like there's a lot of deep veins in e-commerce here that people don't really exploit or really use because yeah big commerce is here Magento's here Shopify's people around here you know WordPress has a thing here and then you know Google Facebook, Facebook marketplaces, that's coming in. There's a lot of stuff going on, and there's a lot of shipping companies here. Yeah. There's a, for whatever reason, I don't know, this is like the shipping hub of e-commerce. I don't get it. Yeah. I think it was actually, I think it was a requirement for us to move here, because it's like, well, if we want to be a shipping company, we've got to go to Austin. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for uh, joining me, and uh, I appreciate it. So Absolutely. everybody check out Shipper HQ. If you have any questions, uh, just call Quentin. Yeah, call, call me. Call him personally. 512-215-4900. All right. Thank call you me. very much. All right. Thank you for joining us on the Shipper's Toolbox. If you have any questions, visit our website, refundretriever.com. Feel free to reach out to us, 800-441-8085, for anything related to your FedEx or UPS invoices. Have a great day.